to everyone. I'm Ada from Poison Rock and I am with an amazing vocalist, a woman, Nina Segeda from A Sound of Thunder. How are you, Nina? I'm great. How are you? I'm fine and excited to have you here because, uh, like I was saying, I love your voice since a lot of years. And I'm finally Thank happy you. to have you back here because not, a, I mean, not everyone knows that, uh, lot, not a lot of knows that we did an interview back in 2020. But it was like on the streaming, so I want to start like fresh new here. So perfect, perfect. With a simple question, just focusing a little bit on you. Who is Nina? So how did Nina get in touch with music? Because I know that you are a singing uh, opera as well, singer opera. So yeah, we got started. So it all started when I was little and my mom heard me singing in the bathtub and she said, I'm going to get rich off of this one. And she was wrong, but she decided to start uh, putting me in, you know, choir, chorus, and she took me to auditions. So I was always singing in, in school and, uh, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And then when I was in high school, she would start putting me in professional auditions. Yeah. Uh, and so I wound up singing at the Washington Opera with the chorus and I was doing that in high school. And then in college, I took a little break just to focus on school oh, so yeah. I could graduate. <laughs> yeah. uh, but when I was done with college, I decided I need to sing again. So I got on Craigslist and after a couple of years, I found A Sound of Thunder and oh, yeah. the rest is history. I mean, yeah. that's I mean, that's very huge being in the Washington Opera. And people, I mean, uh, it's not a, like, you know, just singing in the chorus of uh, the church. It's simple. It's just something big. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's so congratulations for that. I mean, it's funny. Oh, thank you. You mentioned about Ooh. that you joined <laughs> the Sound of Thunder with a, well, like an advertisement on Craigslist. But I want to ask how the band started. I mean, uh, because we were speaking back in 2009. So, a lot yeah, of so years ago. The long time ago, that was actually the year I was getting married and yeah. I was uh, with another band, but that other band wasn't working very well. So I went on Craigslist and I saw uh, an ad for a vocalist that Josh put up and he put up a recording of them performing at a very little bar and I heard the music and I was like, I can do something with that. Like I can definitely do something with that. So I contacted him. And as soon as I contacted Josh, he started talking about comic books. And I was like, oh, this is my new best friend. <laughs> so I, we started going to practice together and talking about comic books. And yeah, I, yeah. it was very, very cool. So basically the love for the comic the comic books and the, the, the put you all together. And that's something that as well, yes. about, you know, like in the, in the video clips. Uh, and that's something that it's really... Not, I don't say something that maybe bring all the bands together, like a connection, something to share, you know, like a mate. Uh, uh, there's some, um, I don't know, a comic book or some artist that uh, really in particular all of you share, like uh, that you like and admire mainly. Yeah, um, so let me think. Uh, right now, I, I think the thing that brought us together was X-Men. That was like all of our favorite comic book growing up. For me, I grew up reading X-Men. That was my thing and uh now now it's more of like everything and yeah. of course we're coming out with our own comic book and really? uh like if you yeah yeah it's called queen of hell <laughs> so we're coming out with our own comic book we did a kickstarter for it last year and uh yeah. for the first part and it was successful so we're going to be releasing the first four issues very soon and a vinyl EP with four songs that will go along with the comics. And so it is I, so all original. I can read, so I can read the comic book and listen to music at the same time? That's exactly, cool. exactly. And it all goes together. It's, I'm so excited. And I don't know if you noticed, but this is Josh's um, office. This is all comic books. I'm not at my house today, I'm at his house. So this is his comic book room. This is all this is thousands of comic books. So you can tell like, we're not just, you know, fans, we are mega fans. <laughs> yeah, but that's as well, you know, something I think cool because I mean, yeah, of course, I think in all the music history, you know, several metal bands uh, take some influences of inspiration from, I don't know, comic books, books, whatever. But in in your in Sound of Thunder, you can feel it and as well see it. And now you can read it. Thank you. That's cool. Yes, exactly. 
So just to, just to know a little bit, it's a, you know, you said the title would be like it's a Queen of Hell. But if you can say a little bit about yeah. the story, the, the, the history behind this comic book. So the story behind the comic book is that, uh, boy, long, long ago, when I was playing World of Warcraft, I was inspired to write a story. And I wrote the story. And uh, when I met Josh, uh, we decided to do one song called Queen of Hell. Okay. And that was on our first EP ever. And I told him the story and he thought it would make a good comic book. So we started writing together, coming up with all of the ideas. Okay. And it wasn't until we had the full idea that we reached out to our friend Rafer, who is a comic writer, mm -hmm. and he actually made the script. So now we have a real script. And then when we went viral in Catalonia, we were able to meet a real comic book artist who's amazing. So we meet the comic artist in Catalonia and we've got our comic writer here in the United States and we're all working digitally to create this comic. So that's, I mean, that's really, I mean, I have to, I have to say it again, that's really cool because I mean, you are pr you. creating something new and, and as well that can bring you know a lot of teenage guys and girls to read <laughs> that's cool because it, you can't only see just that we are having men we're fighting for the power you can actually read it and exactly it yeah also... and it, it, yeah sorry this is a comic book that is um all of the things that we wanted to read when we were young and me specifically i wanted a comic book with a girl that looks like me that takes over hell she's wearing armor and she's beating up demons and there's like blood and fire and i'm like that is what i've always wanted and now finally we have it yeah. but this is you know this is what well, and, and a beautiful things for the girl out there you know because sometimes you don't have uh, as well um like you just see all the time you know the stereotypical women in the society you just saw that and that, that's you grew up with that, you have for two... I remember when I was a teenager, I only was seeing, I don't know, Madonna or Britney Spears, that was, that was all, all of that. No, nothing yes. else. Nothing else. And even yes. as I was aspiring, I had to grow up for finding new inspiration. So, you yeah. that doing something cool of, because of course, the, you know, I, as well when I was a kid, you know, when you are in, in high school, you have, you know, this, uh, you feel insecure about yourself. I think it's something common to a lot of, not only girls, but as well guys. You feel insecure, maybe because, of course, you know, you just watch anime or um, you're a little bit nerdish guy and you feel weird. And that's, yes. not, but that's not right because you're not weird. It's the opposite. Yeah. You're cool. Yeah. So, it's actually very common now for people to, like, kids, they, re they watch anime all the time. It's yeah. surprising for me because I was the anime nerd. I used to go to conventions. You know, dress in costumes, everything. I was doing all of that. And now I see costume, your favorite cosplay that you did it. My favorite cosplay. Yeah. Let me think. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> when I was first, when I first started, uh, my first ever cosplay was Lady Un from Gundam Wing. I know, that so was cool. my first one. Oh, oh my god, I, my favorite, of course. And then I did something from, oh gosh, uh, Magic Knight, Ray Earth. I think uh, later on, oh boy, I was doing video games, so I was doing some cosplay from uh, Street Fighter. That's, that's, that's uh, amazing. That's I'm amazing. Turn up from like Street Fighter, man. It, I, I, it's been a long time, but I I still have a cosplay that I haven't even worn yet because I uh, you know the pandemic happened. Yeah, and, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean that you know everything everyone in the mind today. Still today, some people are fighting yeah. that. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I fell in love with this anime called um, uh, a Future Diary, and I bought the costume. I have the wig. I have everything. So next convention, I'm cosplaying uh, from Future Diary. So I can't wait to do that. That's a, and of course, I hope to see some uh, content out there because it's for those who know as well. For for the people who doesn't know, of course, you are an amazing like with semi for content creator and uh, just eating, you know, the, you. the cheering up when people just crawling. You're putting the cheering up with humor, and uh, that's something I think important to I think nowadays because you face as well uh, different topics as well for the um, people, uh, society, cultures just with a smile. That's what I like I think about. it's important. Yeah. 
You know, we have to tell our, I, I, for me, for us now that uh, most music that you enjoy, it's all digital. Everything is online. People aren't really going to shows anymore. If you want to get to know your favorite musicians, you have to look on your phone, see what they're doing. And so that that's why I got to do TikTok. You know, it's it's really the best way for me to talk to people. Yeah, but that's the things that I like the, as well. I mean, I loved your voice before, before even seeing you and knowing you through as well to TikTok. But then when I was fo actually following, I was seeing this, you, you being really like yourself, like without any filter, really, without any filter. The opposite, using the filter to make a job. Yes, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> no, that's yeah. the beautiful things. That's uh, and I. And of course, I will put in the, in the description of the video as well your link if it's okay for you to people to follow you. Of course, yes. Yeah. Thank you. But Thank just you. coming back to A Sound of Thunder, the first uh, official mm -hmm. album, like I said, the first full length, was uh, M Metal Renaissance in 2011. Yeah. I'm right. But there was the first EP, A Sound of Thunder. So going from an EP to the a met, uh, full length, how was back then? And I mean, and uh, with Metal Renaissance, which was the meaning behind it? Like a renaissance so, of metal, or was just a title? <laughs> it was basically us trying. Okay, so what happened was we didn't know where to record. We found a studio that recorded with tape, so it was analog. And we thought, oh, that's really cool because that's how our heroes used to record, of course. You know, they used to record like this. And we thought, our sound is very uh i want to say like old-fashioned we are classic metal that is that is our sound it's classic heavy metal so our our first few songs our first few songs were definitely more classic heavy metal mm -hmm. so let's record this the way black sabbath would have recorded it and we called it metal renaissance because it was like that for us was the renaissance that yeah. was our renaissance in the 60s and 70s when heavy metal was first being created and it was being recorded on tape so we wanted to introduce our, our own renaissance so, and it was recorded on tape but as well but i think that yeah. was, that's super cool as well of course and um, let's say you had a lot of full length going on so if we got lost yeah. in that full length we got back in the italy yeah. in the evening for you just to just make you can say just a, a kind of excursus all, all around the album before talking about the last one in 2022 i mean what do you think is changing mainly like in the sound uh, in the um, i don't know as well in the mastering and so as well in the technical part of the music in your vocals or in i mean what do you think is as well um like lyrically you think that is changed as well like the topic you're talking about Mm -hmm. So the big changes you might notice are in the sound because we have a producer now, we have Kevin Gutierrez, and having a fifth person who isn't in the band but can listen from an outsider's perspective, he was able to give us some advice like okay this is a cool this is a cool sound but maybe maybe it doesn't need to go on forever so like oh this is a cool song but maybe 10 minutes is too long maybe let's shorten this song to six minutes that's that's better and you might notice some changes in my lyrics because in the beginning i like to tell stories i always love to tell stories that's my favorite way to express myself but in the most recent album i'm less telling a story and more talking about our feelings because we recorded it during the pandemic so that was probably the first time our emotions kind of came up and i wanted to okay yeah yes exactly yeah of course i mean how start i mean about the animated video clips of it was metal and the collaboration of course with Brian Posse, 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 with the girl yeah, Posse, and yeah. how started all this collaboration and as well the idea. So it was metal. The, that song was our way of, how do I say it? You know, every band, every heavy metal band, it feels like they have a tribute to what they love. I know uh, Sabaton does this a lot. Um, a Judas Priest has done it where they just sing about heavy metal and why they yeah. love it. And so that was ours. I, we wanted to sing like, this is what we love about heavy metal. This is how we imagine Expert. it all yeah. began. And the reason we were able to get Brian Posehn is because Josh went to see him perform. You know, he's a stand up comedian yeah. and Josh was wearing a Saxon t-shirt <laughs> and 
Brian Posehn saw him in the audience with the t-shirt and he said, ah, look at this nerd. <laughs> and he knew exactly about Saxon because he's a big heavy metal fan. Yeah. So after the show, Josh talked to him about heavy metal yeah. and he ended up teaching him some guitar lessons. <laughs> so he taught Brian Posehn some guitar lessons and he asked him if it might be possible for him to be in our next music video. So that's, that's how that happened. Well, that's super cool as well, video, video clip. And in, in the album, who do you think you are? I mean, this, like I said, it's kind of a tribute about your idols or... Yeah. I mean, so you chose those type of, uh, to do this, this album to make a tribute to your idol, I guess. I mean, yeah. I one of the idols is, my, is the one that you inspire more. It's, 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 yeah, which inspires you mainly. Uh, me, personally, I am a big uh, fan of probably Rob Halford. Mm -hmm. He is probably, him and, and Ronnie James Dio, they are my top They're number kids. one. Um, I, I will say probably Halford as far as clothing and expression goes because the leather, that will always be my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, probably Halford, yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, I mean, that's as well like, um putting as well an album which is you know just giving uh, some kind of I can say of uh, um homage homaging your your idols it's as mm -hmm. well super cool and it's a kind of a bad because you're doing that this this the music the single the songs of other of other musicians you love this is I think it's that thing something appreciated by the musician if they listen that but in in your I mean just uh, I want to do like a I wouldn't try to just change it because usually I do a question like choose your location, choose, choose your venue. Let's say if you had the chance to cho to make a concert a festival, but in the comic side. So let's put it in the in the in the comic video clips or whatever. You can choose a location or one of these world. So it's up to you. Choose oh. one um, someone who introduced the night, so the guest the oh. who's hosting. So one uh, we can say one hero that you have of the comic of, of all of it. So the location, the hosting, so the one is, is introducing the evening, and then of course we put uh, some bands, of course, and uh -huh. the night for it. The name. For okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. That is a good. That is a good question. So I used to try and create a show called Metal Quest oh. during uh, Baltimore Comic Con. Bom Baltimore Comic Con. It was very small. It was in a very small venue. But if I had anything I wanted, my dream would be to have Metal Quest at San Diego Comic Con, okay. and Mark Hamill would introduce it, and that would be my dream right there. That is the dream. And we would probably play with Dragon Force and um, the sword, and maybe Ghost. Like, okay. those are very big bands right now, but they're bands that we also really, really love. I mean, so I think that would be. Too. You are not a small band, you're a big band too. I mean, come on. I see. Oh, thank you. You're thank you. <laughs> I'm in Sicily, in the middle of, of nowhere in you. So, you arrived right here. Thank so, you. I'm so worried, so you're not a small band. And oh, thank that's you. That's a good question. I mean, who knows? Maybe it can happen because it's not some futuristic world. It's something that can happen. Man, like, let's it would be a dream. <laughs> Let's but hope that this comic does well. I hope everyone reads the comic. Maybe we can get like distributed in, in the United States. We'll see. I know we're being published in France. So let's see if we can get published in the US. That that would be a dream. Why not? I mean, because if it's going well, yeah. like in Europe, for example, but as well in the digital world, just people are buying it. Right. It will gonna be put it in the libraries. And then the yeah, I, will, I hope so. Then, yes. I mean, just imagine going in the in, the, in some book sh bookstore and just see your comic book there. That's gonna be fun. Yes. I think just gonna take a picture of the comic. <laughs> My dream. I will do it every single time. Anytime I go into a comic book store and I see that comic, I will I take a picture. I don't know if you ever saw the movie uh, The Fantastic World of Amelie. We her putting the, you know, like the, the this doll. I don't remember if it was a, like a, um, a doll or something. And she was making a picture with it all around the world, like, you know, the big capital. Maybe you will do the same. Uh, like, uh, yes, <laughs> I would love that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but you mean uh, um, you're um, a vocalist, a singer, a woman in the metal scene. Let's yes. say the rock music scene. What, um, growing up, 
which were your women I like inspiration? Oh, Aretha Franklin. Oh, this that, then Whitney Houston, oh. probably oh. my biggest inspirations as far as uh, as singer goes, because those two women, you can't beat them as far as skill and technique. And I told myself, if I can't hit those notes the way Whitney and uh, and Mariah and um, and uh, and and they can do it, then I'm nothing. I, I told myself very long time ago, I need to be as good as they are yeah. or I'm nothing. So that's that that was my biggest inspiration is those women. Yeah, I mean there are these are singers that I think they you know just we have just one we have them just once in the lifetime. There mm -hmm. will be no yeah, one else exactly. like them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Yes. I do like Jennifer Hudson right now. I think she is she's up there with Whitney Houston and uh, and Aretha Franklin. I think she's amazing. And like when I see a singer like that, I say there there's hope for the world when we still have singers like her. Uh, there are some uh, there is some um, good. Uh, she's one of the bad because she grew up with the Ronnie James Dio basically. That I said all the time that I don't know you. I, uh, there's something in you that reminds me a lot of her, and back forward like a, a lot of her that reminds me a lot of you. Is her name is Leather Leone? She was a uh, oh uh, Leather Leather, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I always imagine a, a, a live show with you with the sound of thunder and her and Leather because now she's with herself, just Leather and um, yes. There she's going to play live after almost. 10 years, you know, just by herself. And it's, uh, you know, just yes. a woman um, putting herself like the, out there because she's not huge as, I don't know, Doro Pesh, but she's always been right. true to herself. That's what I love. Uh -huh. her. But her voice is really... Yeah, Chastain, yeah. Of, her, yeah. Her, ...of your voice. That's something that I never saw in any singer, really, female singer ever. Yes. And so I, I don't know if you know this, we did perform with her. We went on a little uh, three day tour with her and um, Veronica Freeman. It was about, I want to say maybe 10 years ago almost now, yeah, but it was me, Veronica time. and Leather Leon together. Yeah. That's and if you can notice, you have almost the same tone and energy because you're as well, as well in the, but as well like in the, in the core, in the, like in the integrity, you have a lot in common. Because yeah, yeah, we do have a lot in common. Yeah, I'm good with people. <laughs> oh, no, I agree. You, I totally agree. We we got along great for that tour. I think the, the funny thing is that, uh, you know, you see us and we do have a lot in common as far as our personality, our expression, yeah. what we like to sing about. But our voices are so different because I'm a soprano and Leather is, I think she's more of an alto, and I think Veronica is too. So they actually have very uh, deep, like, chesty, chesty voices. Yeah, and me, I sound like a chipmunk. <laughs> I sound like yeah, a yeah, bird. I think it's very funny that uh, we get along so well because it, it, even though we are the same, we are very different. So I love yeah, it. But one day I have to do an interview with both of you because it's gonna be oh. amazing, and I love your nails and your color of please, the night, by the please, way. Please, please, I love it. Yeah, thank you. And it's gonna be really. I mean, uh, but just coming back to to the um, we can say to the last album it was released after the pandemic, 2022, uh, yep. Crimson Cult. So when yep. it's about, you were saying that you are here saying more like talking about feelings, not being more like a storyteller, so this is a big change. So what is about this album and, and uh, as well the processing and the mastering and all about behind all of it? Yeah, so this album was very different from what we're used to because me and the guys, when we write music, we're usually all together. Uh, we Josh will come up with some guitar riffs and, you know, Jesse and then Chris with the drums and then I'll, I'll write lyrics on the spot. But because of the pandemic, we were apart for almost a year. I didn't see them in person for months. So yeah, we would yeah. talk all the time online. Josh would send us ideas and I would write lyrics. And because we're all trapped indoors and, you know, we're watching all the news that's going yeah. on, all the lyrics were very angry and different. So <laughs> when we finally were able to... Sorry? Heavy metal. 
Yeah, exactly. Heavy metal, yes. Heavy metal, metal. So metal, when we were metal. finally... Yeah. So when we were finally able to come back together and rehearse the songs, um, we at first we were just going to make it very simple. We thought we wrote a couple of pandemic songs. Let's record it underground, like on tape. Let's do DIY, do it ourselves. Yeah. But, but then our producer heard them and said, no, let's make an album. <laughs> so our producer flew over from Texas. He recorded us in a little house that we rented. Um, they put together a sound booth for me and somehow we managed to record the whole album in a little house without a yeah. studio yeah, and Kevin took all the recordings back home. So that was a, a big effort as well because during those periods you have to yeah. get just get out, being tested, you're positive, you're negative, you can't get there, it, get, it was horrible. I mean, it's some, some places yeah. that we all are. Covid is eating. Okay, just let's give that to the past, even if it's still around somewhere, somehow. <laughs> and we don't know. Yeah, just we don't pay attention. So, and I mean, in all in all of your career, all these full length uh, singles, uh, EPs, there is some one that some full length or one of these that really you love doing, having fun recording it, and have, you know, even as well like I want to say you cherish more because it sounds almost something like love letter, but some kind of. Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think, and, and this, I'll probably say this every time, but the most recent recordings that we're putting out soon for Queen of Hell, Okay. I think that was my favorite thing that I ever recorded because I had to fly to Texas in order to record at Kevin's studio. And it was just me staying in the studio and recording for a week, a week of nothing but singing. Sing. And while I was alone in the studio, you know, recording and doing all that, I was thinking, this is probably everything I've always wanted. I am recording the music I love, the lyrics that I wrote. I'm recording with a fantastic, you know, producer mm -hmm. in an amazing studio and uh, our fans paid for it like we're not on a label i didn't have to do this myself for once uh yeah, because things you always had to do to be working by yourself because you were for a exactly. long, long time you were independent that's a, an important thing to say as well to remember yes. to remind the people that you did always by yourself all the best yes. and that's a yes, yeah. and after all these years you mean Sometimes people, bands, after a couple of years doing things by themselves, they just would be like, we're done. That's, that's yeah. it. Keep on I, moving. I think for us, it's impossible to stop because even though it's a lot of work, you know, every once in a while we talk like, oh man, I don't know how long we're going to be able to do this. This is, you know, we're sad about something, but the idea of not doing it is more, more depressing. Like, I, I get lazy sometimes. I don't want to come over and record my uh, my demos. I get lazy, but I think, uh, yeah, what do I want to you are, you, know, you are the queen of hell, so you are just... Right. Like, you have to, to remind you, yourself. Yeah, you have to, you know, to go up and stand up up there for your crowd, for, mm -hmm. your, for your people. <laughs> right. I, it's like I have to remind myself that I'm doing this because I want to, not because I have to. Exactly. If I, you know, when I have to do something, I don't want to do it. Yeah, but that's always we just want to change the word. I have to with the, with the I want to. Is this a good, a good way as well when you when you have to do something? I don't want. Yeah. I, don't want I don't want to get out of the bed. But wait, I want to get out of the bed and start my. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I yeah mean, exactly. Like that. But speaking about the actual plan, so because of, if, if I'm not uh, as well, if I'm right, you're going to, yeah, kind of scheduling some live, some touring as well? Yes. So right now we have a few dates in the US that we're doing a little, a, a little mini tour. Okay. And uh, right after we're going to go back to Europe for a few days. And uh, that, that's really all we have planned right now, but that'll all be in September. So it's gonna happen in September, but I, who knows? Maybe there will yeah. be a bigger tour in Europe because I, where are you gonna play in Europe? Because of course, being in Europe, people. Will... We're going to Catalonia, of course. We have of to course. play Barcelona. We're gonna play Terrassa, and um, I. We're trying to get more dates, but honestly, it's been very difficult. We contacted 
all of our contacts in Europe and everybody's saying it's it's hard for heavy metal bands to play there now, especially like, you know, bands that aren't huge. Like obviously Black Sabbath is fine, but <laughs> you know, the the, the smaller bands, the, the bands that aren't on a label, it's difficult it's, for but us. I think you it know? was something so, that impacted from after the pandemic. A lot of venue closed yes. and the few that are still open, uh, they have as well to answer to the big things around yes. behind the, the, the music. So who run this? Yes. And that's something that the band is going to get like, we start a rebellion, we don't play in the, some places anymore. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and even even in Terrassa, like, that gig isn't even at a venue, it's going to be outdoors. So, oh, it's, uh, it's, you uh, know, it's warm it's, in Europe. Yeah, it's in September, here is uh, like summer, home, especially Spain, and that's been, Yeah. Know. But I think, I mean, I just, love it. Just to say to the people that will watch this interview, if there is someone that, I mean, you're in Europe, it's the good way to just catch you and bring you all around. Italy, I think, needs Please. Italy, I think, needs you. We need some heavy metal, some, and just, let's say, some classical metal, because heavy metal Please. is just, we need you. So, and it would be amazing to have you here and meet you in person, of course. And that, of course. I always Man, we were. Yeah, we were can. almost going to go to Milan. We had a we had a show scheduled for Milan and they had to cancel because another show was happening nearby and they didn't want two shows to fight with each other. Yeah, so because if the, we the couldn't bad things that the people go in there, they won't go there. Because it's important because once you're here in Europe, that is well good as well for the other venues around and the promoters and everything is as well cheaper to hire because they don't have to pay all the time flight just you're here right. as a tour and then let's go there it's simple exactly do people don't exactly. get it this is how no, i love work. i love europe because it's so much smaller than the united states <laughs> but there's so many more um there are so many more metal venues so yeah. in the united states when you go from city to city it takes a day you yeah. know it takes a day to drive from one city to another but in europe it takes a few hours yeah, so you can play it's great it's, it's, i love it's, that but it's tiring because if you think that uh, oh. you can have i don't know maybe 20 i don't know 20 say let's 20 gig booked like, oh my god you, want, you just go day after day day after day without almost we yeah, we've never done a uh, a tour for that long. All of us have jobs, you know, That's so awesome. we've never been away for 20 days. <laughs> but the, when we did the tour in Europe the very first time, it was so tiring that when yeah. we were at the airport going from Barcelona to Germany, um, we were so tired. Josh was drinking a beer at like, 10 in the morning yeah. i was crying i was so tired chris fell asleep you know it was that and was the i'll introduce the, the other guy the other guys in the band he was drinking a beer yeah. he was sleeping yeah <laughs> that one's sleeping you know i jesse was fine i guess i was crying i was so tired i'm if you've ever been so tired that you yeah. cry that that was me at the airport yeah because yeah. we don't have what you i mean you don't know where to just have a little bit of sleep, a, a sleep, or just even just yeah. relax, like a muscle, yeah. like a, something like that. There was no relaxing. Even the flight was only two hours, so like after that, yeah. get in the car, drive to the venue, play another show. Yeah. You know, that's it's very the, exhausting. The same way, the, the same, the best way to do a tour is always ever. I mean, you arrive in some European, just the main land in Europe, and have a bus, and you just go with the van. Mm -hmm all around just yep. like all time i mean but you you are tired but anyway you are in the road you can pull the van and just i don't know go in some b b or motel whatever yeah yeah that's the best way and i think as well the most yeah. fun way is like uh but i i don't mean of course in the us things are more spread than europe i think for someone like me going i don't want yeah. to go to see my friend wait i'm still driving like, yeah exactly like, like in a it way, takes a long time, time after two days still driving and so just before ending the interview so just to put a lecture that the the current plan is the the coming book being released is, will be released so this is the actual like uh, but there is an album that you're writing working is just only the comic book with the ep now so what's going to happen is we're going to have three eps okay uh for a queen of hell it's going okay. to be uh 
either three or four. Now I can't remember. But this is just the first one. And okay. each EP has four songs. And each EP has four comic books. So one comic per okay. song. So by the end, we should have at least uh, three, six, nine, nine or 12. I can't remember which, but oh, I think it's supposed to be 12. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And at the very end, all three or four of the EPs will come together and they will be a full length album. That's amazing. That's that's really cool. And with as well with the comic book. I mean I think I can read in your in your in your eyes and your face that you're really excited about it. <laughs> yeah, I am excited. <laughs> Let's come back. That'd be great. So then we will have some live, like you said, like these uh, US European dates and uh, so mm -hmm. This is all I think, everything, and really thank you, Nina. It was really a pleasure to see you again. You are so full of energy and uh, positive. Oh, thank you. And looking forward to see your other content on TikTok. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And, and it was so nice to talk to you. You know, for me as well. And always be as spontaneous as you are, because you really, for me, you're like a, a mother to all the young girls. Really a man. Oh, thank you so much. I try. I will keep trying. Thank you. And Looking forward to meet all the band and you as, and you as well in person. Thank you so much, Anina. Awesome. Have a good day. I can't wait. Have a good day. And I will catch up with the other Okay, you too. Bye, Anina. Bye. Have a good Bye. day. Bye. Bye. You too.